Y'all, what is up everybody? Welcome back to another Bama Saltwater Fishing video. This is Steven, Bama Saltwater here, and I have just launched the boat. As you see, I'm on my 24-foot bay boat down here at Fort Morgan. My buddy Malik is with me today. There he is, walking back from the truck. We have some cut bait, we have some bottom fishing rigs. We're gonna go just do some fun fishing, try to find some redfish, sharks, whatever wants to hit our cut baits. So y'all, to keep these intros short, sweet, to the point, I will see you at our fishing spot. Oh, there's a bite. Oh, these are. Oh my God! <laughs> what do you think that is? <laughs> it ain't what hit me. No, this is a big one. Mm. <laughs> well, we ain't got a neck because I broke it, <laughs> so that ain't gonna work. I haven't seen it yet, so I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's a big red. Oh my God. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> That's a real good one. Y'all just caught this nice, large American red snapper about 15 feet below the boat off this gas platform. You can only keep red snapper on Fridays through Mondays. And Malik's hooked up now. I guess my chumming's been working. <laughs> it took about five minutes to get a decent, decent uh, chum line going. And that beeping you hear is this unmanned gas platform. Oh, red. Yep. Yeah, that's a beautiful red snapper. That'd be a keeper. Let me show you what I'm using real quick. All I have is some 50 pound fluorocarbon leader coming down to a three quarter ounce egg weight and a five aught circle hook. I'm running this on 40 pound braid and a 6,000 size reel and a seven foot heavy power fast action rod. And we're just fishing these gas platforms here just chum in the water and see if we can pull up some cobia mangrove snapper and these red snapper are bycatch but i have some frozen sardines i'm just cutting up and then dropping down small chunks of them do y'all see that on the graph it's 66 67 feet deep and all those nice marks are some pretty big fish just sitting here cutting these sardines up dropping them about three pieces at a time trying to get some fish to come out from the structure we're sitting up current let's try that again put on another chunk of sardine i've been chumming with these pieces of sardine let's drop it down like i said about 15 feet below the boat there we go let's see what happens oh that's a good one that might be a cobia snapper I'm gonna reel my bait in. And Malik's hooked up to a nice fish right now. Just staying steady pressure. Got a big fish on, man. Is that on the cut sardine? Yep. You got a Jack Craval, he's coming back here. You remember I said I was 90% sure it was a lean? Yeah. Jack didn't cross my mind yet. Yo, hey. Malik's hooked up with a big old Jack Craval, <laughs> which are edible, but I think we're choosing to release this one or keep it for bait. They make pretty good bait, and they're actually not bad to eat either. Yeah, see him. There he is. Wow. He ain't even a giant. After seeing all them shark videos, I'm not keen to reach my hand up. You gonna break? Yeah, that's 80 pounds. Just break my hand first. <laughs> there we go. Heck yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Listen to that sound. Him grunting. Big old Jack Craval. You'll hear some people call them yellow fin tuna or amber jack, but these are not. They're Jack Craval. There we go. Check it out. Malik with that Jack Craval. They're very hard fighting fish. You can catch them inshore, offshore, off the beach, off the piers. They're pretty fun to catch. Oh my God. Mm. Yeah. Oh, you got him. Yeah, dude. Oh my God. Gosh. <laughs> oh, this is like insane. <laughs> That's, I don't know. This is a pretty big fish. I think it is a snapper the way it's gone down and into the platform yep. instead of away. <clears throat> but you never know till you see it. Big snapper. Wow. Dad, come, dude. 
That's maybe one of them big marks we were seeing. <laughs> Dang, son. That's a nice one, isn't it? Heck yeah. <clears throat> I don't think I can. You mind just leadering them up? Yep. That's one of those 15, 16 pounders. That's a good one. That is a perfect size fish right there. Look at this giant girl here. Yo, know, those big fish, those big red snapper can actually spawn and lay up to 2 million eggs compared to the average size compared to the average size snapper that can lay only up to about 500 or so eggs. Malik just hooked up again. What you got? You think so? He's circling up pretty easy. Oh yeah. Oh, whoa, big whoa. barracuda just bit that. Leave it down there. <laughs> that was cool. That didn't take long, did it? <laughs> Yo, they decided to troll to our next spot. I'm hooked up to something pretty big that we might have to chase. I don't know. Look how much line it took. What do you think it is? Take that much line like that? A giant bobo. <laughs> what if it's a 30 pound yellow fit black fin tuna? 20 pound wahoo? <sighs> I guess I need to get the gaff. <clears throat> Don't say it yet. <laughs> I need to get my glove. Every time we say gaff, it's like, it, it's bad luck, it seems to be, don't it? <laughs> Man, that took out some line. Dude, we didn't even get a chance to actually give it any gas. I know. <laughs> I mean, I thought I heard my drag going off. Took about 150 yards of line. <clears throat> it's got some weight to it, man. Oh, jeez. Big. Yeah. King, maybe? <sighs> what size line? 40. I'm just worried about how he's hooked. I just need to see some color. My arm's kind of on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's still way down there. Yeah. <clears throat> Didn't expect that, did you? No. As soon as we started. Is it any color yet? Uh -huh. <sighs> yep, color. What is that? It's a freaking jack. Is it a jack cravajo? No, amberjack. Amberjack. That's a stud. Dude. That's a stud amberjack. Trolling. Trolling. <laughs> of all things. <laughs> Whew. Don't get hurt. Got him? Yep. Okay. Thank you. That's a stud. What the heck? Of all things to catch trolling. <laughs> Must have been what was sitting on top of that reef we just left. If that's the case. I'm about to go drop a bunch of squid. Whew. I got some plot. Oh, oh, that dude. hook. Yeah, I'll have to change some hooks, huh? Yeah, I appreciate you, Malik, for uh, getting the bogey grip on this joker. We didn't know what it was. We had put out the Rapala X wraps to troll. This is all we we're doing. We came out kind of far, 25 miles out. And this is what he ate size 14 Rapala X wrap, black and silver. I'm gonna have to change these out. These hooks are finally straightened out on that big fish. So let me change that out. Mallet's pulling a size 12, same size, same color. And uh, we'll see what else we get. Kind of out of breath on that one. We're gonna reel mine in. Mallet's hooked up. Yeah, it's a boat boat. Heck yeah, we need that. that. We need that. that. <laughs> need it for bait. Getting some fish. Don't you do it. Doing that circle. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what happened there, did you? <laughs> that was funny. Okay, we got bait. Or you got bait. Y'all, so we got our two-man limit of red snapper. We tried chumming up for some more fish. Only had some bonita in that slick. And then we got the amberjack trolling and all that. So Malik's about to pull up the trolling motor. I, turn, I turned it off. And uh, we're going to make our way back and get ready to go clean those fish. I'm gonna tuck the camera away. It's real choppy today, real close together. We're gonna to get soaked, so I'm gonna tuck this thing away. 
and uh, and I'll see y'all back at the house. And then I have my amberjack today. It's the next day, and I'm gonna clean this, and we'll go up and cook it. So here we go. What an awesome amberjack. These are only open for like one month in the year. Check these things out. They have a really cool mouth. One of the hardest fighting fish, if not the hardest fighting fish, on the reef. So let's go ahead and start cleaning it. It's a big fish. It may seem intimidating. It has the same anatomical structure as everything else. So we're going to take our 7-inch sword flex fillet, link down below, and start cutting it. You can feel there's really hard head right there and then the soft parts right there. So see where I'm pushing down? That's where I like to make my initial cut. And then go around that peck fin and down. And then shallow cut so you don't pierce the guts. Open the bottom up. Have some pretty thick skin. And then all the way to the tail. And I kind of like to run my knife along the bone, pull back with my thumb, make sure you don't cut your fingers, and you'll get stopped. Their spine will stop your knife. And that's where I kind of start on this side. On the tail. Or you can start at the head, either one. Open it up. All the way. To where you made that first cut see and they have some head meat there it's not a lot and now i'm going to fillet it and just meet my cuts in the middle i don't care how big a fish is they may seem intimidating but aside from like tuna flounder and sharks and rays they're all practically the same so once we met in the middle I like to stick my knife on there flip it around try to do my best not to cut towards me i'm not perfect but and cut it off the tail look at that and just pull it back and now we're going to flay it off the rib cage so kind of just guide through these pin bones in the middle and around and down that big thick rib cage on this amberjack. Now look at that fillet. Heck yeah. And look at that. No missed meat on the fillet. They do have a big belly. See that belly meat we can get off the rib cage. Like if you want to keep on filleting and have you some scraps like that. And there's you a really nice fatty piece of belly meat. Obviously you'll take these stomach lining off, but that's a nice little steak of belly meat. But I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and see how it's not real bloody. We bleed the fish out by cutting their gills before we throw it on ice. And now I haven't even used a water hose. This is a very clean filleting table. I'll flip it over and repeat that process again. So I'm just gonna dry off my cleaning table. If you've noticed, I haven't used the water hose. And see how clean these fillets are. There's no blood on them. There's no worms. Everybody's like, Amberjack's full of worms. Every fish can have spaghetti worms in them. They're not harmful to humans, but if you know, they can be unappetizing if you see them. I've even seen them in speckled trout. I've seen them in drum, jacks, a lot of fish, but look at that, there's no worms on this fish. Some of the white stuff you see is connective tissue. So that's a really pretty fish. Nice white fillet. Got a big yacht going behind of us, but next thing I wanna do, which you don't have to, but they do have some thick skin with a little bit of scale is I like to take the meat off the skin using the same knife, seven inch. You don't have to have a giant knife. If you have to do it in pieces, you can. Get through that part, double check, make sure you aren't cutting through the skin. If you do like I did, 
Don't worry about it. We can start from this side. Boom, there we go. See how I left a little bit of meat on that skin. They have a lot of red meat the bigger they get. So you can see on here, if you get real close to the skin, you get all that bloody red meat. If not, you just have a small little bloodline. I don't care how much you bleed the fish out, you're gonna have that bloodline in there. That you can eat, it's not gonna hurt you. May, if you don't like a strong, strong fishy taste, trim it out and that's what we're gonna do. So take your little fillet knife, and just trim some of that red meat out. And we're gonna cut this into manageable pieces. So there's a nice little AJ steak. There's another one, we'll trim that out. Boom, look at that amberjack steak. See how pretty that meat is. Now, since it's kind of manageable now, we're gonna flay out that red meat and there's some small pin bones at the front of the fillet where you go around the rib cage. There we go, like that's not gonna hurt you eating that. It's this real thick stuff. So another manageable piece. Another amberjack steak. There we go. Look at that, pretty piece of meat. Perfect for blackening, grilling, baking, frying if you want to, but black and amberjack and butter is delicious. And that's what we're gonna do with the side salad. You'll see when we get up in the kitchen, I need to finish the rest of this filet, get these back on ice, see how clean it is. I'll wipe these down with a paper towel and we have plenty of meat. I'll probably share some with some neighbors and friends and then keep some to cook upstairs. So I'll see you up there in the kitchen. Y'all, so now we're gonna do our amberjack. I have two gorgeous amberjack filets Check that out. This is incredibly simple and gonna be delicious. See how pretty those are? If you have one super thick, you can always take your knife and cut it in half and then you'll have a few more pieces. But there's some amberjack fillets. I'm gonna take a butter in a pan on medium heat. See that sizzling? We're working pretty quick here. Take my Everglades. You can use any seasoning you like. This is just Everglades original. There's a lot of different seasonings. This one, you don't have to add anything else. There's plenty of, you'll hear the dogs in the background. There's plenty of salt on this. So make sure you get both sides and you don't have to add anything else on there. And now we have a nice layer of Everglades. Lay that down. You want to hear that sizzle. If you don't hear the sizzle, your pan's not hot enough. Amberjack is a very nice white and flaky fish. These are thick fillets. You don't want to bury them in seasoning, but you still want some flavor on them. So that's what we're doing. Lay that one down. He's gonna cook about four to five minutes on each side. They're pretty thick fillets. Let me clean this area up, wash my hands, and get ready to prep our side. Y'all, so while these are cooking, see how they're turning nice and wide on the edges? That's what we want. Hands are clean. Let's go ahead and make our salad. This is a mozzarella with balsamic vinaigrette salad with some chopped strawberries, tomato, and spinach, and a little bit of basil. Let's take our baby spinach. Get us a nice base. It's already rinsed. Good thing about salad like this is it's very healthy, so you can pile it on it. It's mostly water. Now let's take our fresh basil, taking three leaves of them, and roll them up and slice them up. Basil goes a long way. It's pretty strong, but this is what I'm using. Have some sliced strawberries, fresh. Lay those down. I love strawberries. You can do watermelon as well, if you like. And now I'll have some cherry tomatoes that are sliced in half. Now we're gonna take our mozzarella. This is fresh mozzarella pearls. Get you a little handful. You can tell I've already been munching on them. I've already been munching on a few of these mozzarella, so good. Mm. Let's spread that out. I love fresh mozzarella cheese. That's why I'm putting a lot on there. So let's squeeze our balsamic vinegar glaze on there. This is what makes it really nice contrast. And there's our salad. I'm gonna dip some of that mozzarella because that's so good in that balsamic glaze. Mm. 
I love that. See how easy that was? Fast and simple, but it looks great. And it tastes even better. Let's check on our amberjack. Oh yeah, nice crust on that amberjack. Get a little bit more butter on there. Lay that down. We're working quick. These are thick pieces though, so if you have it on too high of a heat, they'll burn. You want them nice and charred like that. We'll let those cook in another five minutes, and then we'll be ready to plate our food. We need some of the strawberries. <laughs> Also, here we go. I'm going to check on that AJ since these are thick pieces. It's not cooked all the way yet, so we're going to let it finish cooking. Don't be afraid to take a fork or your tongs and check your fish. You can also do a meat thermometer if you want. Y'all, these have been cooking for pretty much 10 minutes. I have flipped them a couple times just try to get an even cook or thick fillets. If you want to, you can cut them in half before you lay them on your pan, but we didn't. So now it's time to plate our food. Check that out. You can kind of sear it on the side. Let it sit there for a little bit in that blackened butter. You can see you get a nice sear on the side. And plate our amberjack. This is a big plate of food. So I'm just doing that on one plate and this one will be set to the side. Y'all check how pretty that sucker is really nice white flaky meat see i took a little bit of that off just to show you look how that look how pure that is never been frozen kill the heat you guess what y'all we have a beautiful plate of fresh food healthy food right there and also we have some drinks let me moist my palate real quick with some of this uh, coconut water i love this stuff with some of that pulp in there really good hmm I love fresh coconut water with that pole. So good. So y'all, let's try our amberjack. We're gonna get a piece of this off. Check out the middle. See how it flakes apart? Super, super flaky fish. You can see the lines right there. See the juice? It's not dried out at all. Perfectly cooked. Let's give it a bite. Mmm. This tastes like a really good fish if you order in like a high-end restaurant along the coast super flaky nice texture to it it's, it's firm but you have that nice grilled outside that's just amazing mm. i love that that's extremely fresh but y'all just to contrast some of the saltiness from that seasoning let's get some of our mozzarella spinach balsamic glaze salad here with a little bit of that cherry tomato mmm <laughs> Let me finish chewing that. That is delicious. Wish you could try this at home. You can do this with any firm white flaky fish, but that amberjack was just perfect for this. Great size, great thickness to that amberjack steak. The texture and the flakiness was perfect, and I love that salad. It only took like 10 minutes to prep and cook this whole plate of food, and it looks like you would get it at a gourmet restaurant. See y'all, I hate to let you go. But we'll see you on the next Bama Saltwater Fishing video. Don't forget to go check out all the sponsors down linked below. There's even promo codes for you to use. Mossy Oak Apparel, I'm wearing their shorts, the shirt. Uh, Bama Saltwater hats on BamaSaltwater.com as well. Everything's linked below, y'all. Those are our partners of the channel. I appreciate you. If you haven't subscribed yet, smash that subscribe button. Channel's constantly growing. It's amazing to be able to share these experiences with each and every one of y'all. As always, I want to thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us. We'll see you. Later.